In the outer courtyard of the Amun Temple at Dangale, another story of destruction may be unfolding. These ruins, too, may be the product of something more than just the ravages of time. This temple seems to have been abandoned for some reason, and we're not quite sure why. From beneath the ground, comes evidence of a catastrophic moment in Dan Gale's history. It's a long piece of palm wood, but it's been incredibly badly burned. Uh, you can see this is charcoal, and you can see actually little bits of the palm beam breaking up as it's disintegrating. We're actually finding the real part of the roof beam that fell in after a big, big fire in this forecourt. It must have been a terrible, terrible fire because uh, the burning is so extensive. And you can see traces of this fire on the columns, on the floor. And we actually have a piece of it preserved. Finding an extensive layer of burning does give us a good clue as to why um, people left the area. Uh, maybe it was a big war. Maybe the temple accidentally caught fire. However it started, the fire must have been fierce enough to cause the evacuation of the temple. And maybe the entire city. But what may have been a disaster for the Merowites has proven to be a blessing for Julian Sala. Everything underneath the layer of the fire that was on the floor surface has been completely sealed. This creates a time capsule. We have a specific moment in time preserved for us that we can see. If Julian Sala's theory is correct, that moment in time may correspond with the final days of the Nubian Empire. Scholars know little about this period, but excavations at Dan Gale could help explain how and why the powerful kingdom came to an end. To learn how the empire first began, we must look to monuments farther north. Just beyond the fourth cataract of the Nile lies the most sacred place in all of Nubia, Jebel Barkal, the Pure Mountain. At the base of this landmark, sits the largest and what may be the oldest Amun temple in the country. It overlooks a fertile stretch of the Nile that has nurtured life for more than 3,000 years. Temples and tombs have much to tell about the Nubian kingdom's earliest years. Salah takes a break from the excavation to make an annual pilgrimage to Jebel Barco. Salah trades the green, lush valley of the Nile for the inhospitable terrain of the Bayuta Desert. The journey will take him 110 miles to the northwest, along a route steeped in history. He follows the same path the great kings and queens of Nubia would have traveled to reach the temples at Jebel Barkal. It is very hard, very rough, very difficult uh, drive, but I like it very much. The farther Salah gets from the Nile, the harsher the terrain. Here, only a few scattered wells provide a lifeline to the people of the desert. Nomads are drawn to these wells from great distances with their flocks in tow. They seek water, more precious here than gold. The well is also a blessing for travelers like Salah, driving across the desert. By car, he can cross the Bayuda in one long day. But for the ancient Nubians, it would have taken weeks. At the end of the road lies Karima, the town where he was born, nestled at the base of Jebel Barco. The mountain itself have a great volume when you see it with the rest of the plain around it. And all of a sudden, you have a mountain rising up uh, 100 meters high. So it is very impressive. For the young Salah growing up at the foot of the sacred mountain, Jebel Barkal and the ruins around it were a constant presence. I liked this mountain when I was a child. I used to come here every Friday. 
and it was fun for me and my friends. At the same time, for me, these ruins were a mystery. I was very curious to know what was it about the mystery of the mountain. The mystery dates back 3,500 years to some of the greatest pharaohs of Egypt, Nubia's northern rival. In the shape of Jebel Barkal's pinnacle, they saw the most powerful sign of kingship, the cobra, or Uraeus. You will see really the silhouette of a crown with the symbol of kingship on front of this crown. Since it was Amun, the god of gods, who granted kingship, the Egyptians built a temple here in his honor. Expanded over the years by Nubian kings, the temple is the largest in the Sudan, but time has taken its toll. Carved columns like those Julie and Sala have uncovered at Dan Gale no longer exist, worn away by centuries of exposure. Weather conditions are very harsh, so now the temple and the whole site is really in, in ruins. But when the temple shone like a jewel at the base of the sacred mountain, the mighty Egyptian pharaohs would have traveled hundreds of miles to be crowned here by the high priests of Amun. This was the holiest place in the Nile Valley. They were thinking from long away that Amun was dwelling here. Inside the base of the pinnacle lies a temple to the goddess Mut, wife of the god Amun. Sala can read the mythology of the mountain carved on the temple walls. You can see clearly the silhouette of the mountain. A high outcrop with a flat uh, top like that. And in front you can see the snake and the sun disk, which is a symbol of kingship. And inside the mountain we can see a moon seated on her throne. This was the ancient belief that Amun was dwelling inside uh, the mountain of Jabal Barkal. In the 8th century BC, the once powerful Egypt had grown weak and lost its hold on the sacred mountain. The Nubians assumed control of Jabal Barkal, calling themselves the true sons of Amun, and eventually became so powerful they marched on Egypt. They conquered their northern rival and founded the 25th dynasty. Everybody thinks that the Egyptians were the masters of the Nile Valley, but it was not the case all the time. Uh, for a period of more than 100 years, the Nubians were the masters of Africa. King Taharko was the most prominent in this powerful lineage of Nubian pharaohs who came to rule over the land of the pyramids. Their kingdom now incorporated all the wealth and splendor that had defined the Egyptian civilization. For almost a century, the Nubians controlled the territory that today would stretch from Khartoum all the way to Palestine. It may be at that time it was the largest country of, uh, of the whole world. It was an empire, a real empire. Though the Nubians ultimately lost control of Egypt to an invasion of Assyrians, this didn't put an end to their kingdom or their loyalty to the great god Amun. They regrouped in the south and would flourish for another thousand years building temples to the god of gods all over their realm. It is Salah's mission to restore the legacy of his ancestors. Now it is part of my life to go out of home to excavate. I have to dig something. I have to discover something for the history of Sudan.